What's going on, firefighter fans? I'm Vince with the training section. We're going to talk about the new high rise uh, bundles and nozzles and the whole setup that's going on to your apparatus near you very soon. Okay, so we have transitioned into basically carrying what is a 2.25 diameter hose package with a nozzle that is a basically a small mini stack, which is a one inch over an inch and an eighth uh, tip, okay? Two and a half inch couplings. We've been transitioning into this. We've been carrying basically uh, a new high rise bag setups for all this, but this is basically the nozzle bundles that's been in a demo with uh, engine three for the last year and a half or so. Um, you're gonna get basically tutorials on how to pack the bundles, how to deploy the bundles, how to go into a stand pipe and, uh, and connect. So talking about this real quick, like I said, it's an inch over an inch and a tip. The design for this is that if this nozzle package will work in a wide array of basically battlefields that you may uh, encounter, okay, on your standpipe. So anything from low pressure systems of 65 PSI all the way to 100 PSI outlet pressures, okay, or greater. So um, the thought process with the one inch tip is that if you go to uh, connect and you have a, a low pressure system, 65 PSI or less, this will act as a choker tip, allow you to still flow a pretty good um, fire flow of a, a near 185 GPMs, uh, still give you a manageable stream, still give you a stream that has a lot of reach. Ideally, we'd like to flow with the inch and an eighth tip if possible, okay? And that's gonna flow at 266 gallons a minute at 50 PSI nozzle pressure. So if we're into those systems that are newer, that don't have any things that's uh, causing us to basically have restriction in the flow, uh, 80 PSI outlet pressure or greater, this will allow us to flow about 266 gallons a minute. So uh, like I said, 2.25 inch hose, not as large as two and a half, uh, definitely more manageable and more maneuverable and a little bit more uh, lighter weight, but also you're still uh, flowing in a, in a larger nozzle that will give you uh, larger flows for when you're in those uh, high rises. And uh, like I said, we'll give you guys some more information. All right, so we're going to show you how to how to pack the uh, officer bundle, the driver bundle, and the fourth bundle that we have. We're going to start from a rolled hose, uh, just because the hose is new. If you don't do it from the rolled hose, you get a lot of air, um, and then it just kind of balloons out. So you want to start from the rolled position. We have a mark with the sharpie at 36 inches, and that's going to be from the end of the coupling. So that 36 inch mark is going to be where you're going to make your first fold. So when you start out. Uh, it's very similar to the Denver load, except we have the male coupling um, at our knees. What you're going to do is you want to make a 90 degree angle with the male coupling. Hold that in place with your knees. You're going to go up to your 36 inch mark and make your first fold. So 36 is basically going to be right in the middle of your first fold. As you come down, you want to keep it tight. And your first fold at the bottom is going to be almost right in line with the coupling. Once you make that first fold, don't worry about the male coupling anymore. As you go around, all of the folds are going to line up off of that first one. So we're going to come around to the top. Again, keeping everything tight. Your next fold is going to be right in line with your first one. And we're simply going to go back and forth and make each fold on either side. Keeping it uh, taut with your knees is going to kind of keep it in place as we go back and forth. We have a reference mark with duct tape uh, as far as the, the halfway point of the hose, a 25 foot mark, that's just for reference. And again, making all your folds, keeping them tight going all the way around. We're lined up at the bottom. And then your last fold, you'll end with the female coupling coming down you're going to make the connection with the mail just do like two or three turns there's no need to, to make it tight all the way and you have your bundle all right so what we're going to show you here is the this is going to be the firefighter bundle uh, it's very similar to the driver and officer bundle we still have our 36 inch mark marked with sharpie that 36 inches is measured off of the tip of the nozzle. So we're not going 36 from the coupling like we did with the others. It's going to be 36 from the end, end of the nozzle. That way when we make our folds, it protects the nozzle on the inside and it doesn't hang out. So what we're going to do, make our first fold at 36 inches. Again, you want to keep it tight. 
We're going to make bring our first hold all the way down to the tip of the nozzle, and we're going to go back and forth. Again, coming around to the other side, all of your folds at the bottom, you want to keep them in line. on the coupling side for orientation and then one strap on the opposite side in line with the lower strap. So typically what I'll usually do, take the scruffy side down, and then once you secure it, try to secure it with your tab on top. That way when you do it to all three of them, when you lay your bundle down, you have the straps all in line uh, and you don't, have to, you don't have to mess with it. Just adjust it. So all your straps end up on top. When you go to deploy it, undo the strap, grab the center, and just pull them straight out. All right, so we're gonna show you how to go ahead and strap the firefighter bundle. We'll start with the nozzle. Again, we're gonna use scruffy side down. We're going to capture the nozzle within the strap just to kind of keep it secure. I kind of go right behind the bale, between the bale and the coupling. You've got a little bit of an indent there, and it'll just kind of help keep it in place. We'll go directly to the other side. Again, keeping all of your straps, your strap tabs on top. In the next one, we're going to capture the female coupling. And that's just going to prevent it from swaying. All right, so what I'm going to show you here uh, is basically how to take it out of the compartment and put it um, on your air pack, and then how to get it off of your air pack once you get to where you're, you're going. So both the officer bundle and the firefighter bundle will be located in this compartment here, just like we're used to. Uh, so what you're gonna do is just pull the bundle out. You're gonna find the split, which is where your, where your uh, cylinder bottle is gonna go. Over your head, and drop it down. So it'll be on your air pack. So leave both your hands open for a tools, water can, officer bag, uh, or wherever else you decide to take uh, on a high rise. To get it off, once you get to your landing, just grip the bottom of it, and you're going to give it a little push, and then you're going to push back. And it's going to come off that easy. From that point there, undo your straps, undo your coupling, and you can flake it out. All right, so uh, the other way we're going to show you to carry it, which is uh, probably a pretty common way, it's kind of the go-to, is going to be over your shoulder, which is probably what you're used to. Same thing, just put your arm through where your cylinder would go. You still have both hands free. Uh, you know, you're gonna wanna kinda hold this pack. You have one hand free. Uh, so I prefer actually over the cylinder, but uh, this is also an option if you choose to do that. All right, so what we're gonna show you on this side uh, is how we have them on the rig. Uh, so it's gonna be two bundles, driver's side, uh, in the overhead compartment above the wheel well. They're going to be upside down, which is going to make it easier just to unstrap it and then go straight onto your back. So what we're going to do, just unstrap it in the middle, grab your bundle, which is already upside down, throw it over your back.
What's going on? I'm here with uh, Lieutenant Whittington. All right, say hi, Lieutenant Whittington. All right, and we're basically, this is our standpipe outlet prop, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through how we wanna ideally set up in the best case scenario, okay? So this is gonna be a type one or a class one uh, outlet, okay? So a two and a half inch uh, discharge here, and uh, Lieutenant Whittington is gonna act as either the driver or operator, whoever's assigned to basically make the connections to the outlet, all right? So wherever outlet you des designate, that's what we're gonna go with, okay? So this is a, um, a conventional valve. We know this because there's nothing on the a PRD, no device that's gonna basically uh, hamper us from opening this, this uh, hand wheel all the way. And if you was to reach in or look in, there's gonna be threads in this outlet that shows you that's a conventional, it's not a PRV, all right? It's not a pressure reducing or restricting valve inside of this outlet, okay? So we're, we're expecting to have pretty decent pressures on this, hopefully, all right? So first thing he wants to do ideally is he's gonna get his gate valve out of his kit. All right, and he's gonna make a connection prior to flushing. All right, this is super important because sediment and debris can basically develop in this piping. And if you open the wheel crank to flush it and you're unable to basically close this, you have the ability to control the outlet now with this gate valve. So uh, Lieutenant Whitten is gonna open up his valve here. Watch out, it can get a little wet. Okay. He's gonna open this all the way, and then he's going to basically use the gate valve as a, as a way to flush and control the outlet. Okay, very good, awesome. So at that point, he's able to now connect the rest of his equipment, all right? If he has to use an elbow to get out and make some room, he's gonna make his connection with his elbow. Okay, after the elbow, he's going to go onto our pressure gauge. The pressure gauge is extremely important because this allows us to know what type of pressure and flow uh, capabilities we have on this outlet, all right? The, the pressure gauge needs to go past the elbow, or I'm, I'm sorry, past the gate valve because if we are between the gate valve and the outlet with the pressure valve, we're not getting a true flow pressure, we're just getting what the outlet's pressure is, okay? And we'll talk about that as we communicate with our nozzle mates. At this point, he's able to now connect into his uh, coupling of his hose. And he's gonna communicate with his nozzle team that he's gonna open up the system and put water on the line. By using the gate valve, he's going to charge the, the hose line. Okay. So prior to flowing, we... Okay, we have the nozzle. It's, it's open. Basically, we want, in ideal circumstance, we want to test and see what our flow pressure is. Right now, we're at about the uh, 60, 70 PSI range which is good for the one inch tip. If he was to shut down or the nozzle was to shut down, we basically have a pressure of what's in the system. So Adam, go ahead and shut the nozzle down. If you return to your gauge, you're gonna have a little bit higher, almost hitting in the 100 PSI. And right there, that's not a true pressure, that's more of a static pressure, okay? So what we wanna know is what our flow pressure is once the nozzle is open and we can set everything and restrict it based upon using the gate valve here. And that's basically a setup on an outlet. All right, so we're down here at the nozzle. Again, we have a one inch over inch and an eighth. Uh, the pressure that we want at our standpipe for the one inch is gonna be 65. And for the inch and eighth, it's gonna be 80. So it's important as the uh, firefighter at the nozzle to relate to who's ever at the standpipe, which tip you decide you want to use so that that way they know what pressure uh, to set at the standpipe. Again, so it's going to be uh, 210, 265, uh, one inch over inch and eight. All right, so what we're going to show here is going to be the flow uh, with the inch and eight. So right now we have our standpipe set to 80 PSI. And you can see what the flow in the stream looks like.
And then what we're gonna do is now we're gonna lower the pressure at the stamp plate back to 65. And you'll be able to see the stream and the reach with that as well. So now that we have our stamp plate pressure back to 65, we're gonna throw the one inch tip back on and it'll show you the difference between 65 PSI with the inch and the eighth versus the one inch, which is what it should be. So you can see with the one inch tip, you have it's, uh, less pressure, less flow, but you've got a longer reach. 